Welcome to 2.2 Homework. Uh, number one, uh, what we have there in the pattern is uh, all you're doing is writing in succession, but then you're just changing every other one to a negative. Or you could say all the evens are negative. So you're supposed to give the next two numbers letters or figures. So there's negative 6, then it's positive 7. On number 3, it's the alphabet backwards. Z, Y, X, W, V. And I think you all can figure out what is after that. And then on number five, uh, you have a three-sided figure, a four-sided figure, a five-sided figure. So you're going to have to do a six-sided figure. And then you're going to have to do a seven-sided figure. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right, next page. May contest a conjecture about the given quantity. So number seven, the sum of an even integer and an odd integer, what does that mean? Well, I get a nine there, so let's just test a couple. So an even and an odd, that makes 17. How about uh, two plus three, that gives five. And how about uh, how about 12 plus, oh, four. That gives us, oh, four's not odd. Uh, <laughs> um, Let's do 7. Four plus, 12 plus 7 is 19. Okay, so notice that when we add an even and an odd, I have all odd numbers together. So a conjecture would be if you add an even and an odd together, you get an odd answer. All right, that's our conjecture that we would write down. Number 9, the quotient division of a number, any number, and its reciprocal. So if I said 2 and its reciprocal is one half, all right, what do we get? Well, what you're doing here, and you should learn this, is the top times the reciprocal of the bottom, and that gives you four. All right, what about three? Three over one-third, its reciprocal, the quotient of the number and its reciprocal. So that's going to be three, the top times the reciprocal of the bottom. Okay, so can you make a conjecture about this right now? A conjecture about the quotient of a number and its reciprocal is just the number squared. Think about that. But what if I said the number was, because it's a special type of number, we've just been using whole numbers. What if I did the opposite? One half, one half's a number, and the quotient of its reciprocal, the reciprocal of one half is two. How do we do that? The top times the reciprocal of the bottom. Again, that would be one-half squared. So it is the number squared. That's what we would say about the conjecture. The quotient of a number and its reciprocal. So n over 1 over n, a number and its reciprocal, is n times the reciprocal of the bottom, or n squared. That's your conjecture. Number 11, find a counterexample to show that the conjecture is false. All you have to do is find one example that it's false. So number 11. The product of two positive numbers. Positive numbers, doesn't matter what it is. So 3 times 5. Those are two positive numbers. Is always, and this would be the product, okay, is always greater than either number. Okay? Can we figure out one that isn't? Now, they have to be positive numbers. How about 3 times 1 fifth? It doesn't say they have to be whole numbers. There we get 3 fifths. Okay? Is that product bigger than... Um, either of these two numbers. Well, three-fifths is bigger than one-fifth, but three-fifths is not bigger than three. So there is your uh, counter example. It proves that, uh, that that's not true. All right, number 13. If two angles are supplements of each other, all right, so let's do 60 plus 120. That gives us 180. That means they're supplements of each other. Then one of the angles must be acute. Hmm. Can we find one that proves this false? Okay, so how about 90 plus 90? Those are supplements of each other, but those are two right angles. They are not acute angles. So that is a counterexample. Guys, you just have to think and just keep coming up with numbers and use extremes. All right, next. Number 15. Here's the law of detachment. It says, if the hypothesis is a true conditional statement, Okay, then the conclusion is also true. So we are only looking at the conditional statement. So number 15, if you download a GIF, a G-I-F, don't look at the conclusion. So what we have here is the, um, the um, conditional statement. And the 
hypothesis is that. What follows is what they're telling you you actually have done or, or what you have. So it's saying that you downloaded a, a GIF file. Okay. Well, then that means the hypothesis is true. And therefore, whatever the conclusion says has to be true. All right, so it says use the law of detach detachments to determine what you can conclude from the given information. So uh, my device crashes. Okay, because it is a true statement. Number 17. If a quadrilateral is a square, there is your hypothesis. Now read the last part. This is the part that actually is happening. Quadrilateral RS, QRST has four right angles. All right? So a quadrilateral is a square. All right, well, your quadrilateral has four right angles. Does that mean it's a square? Not always. Okay? So we can't really conclude, conclude it. So it's not always true. All right, so let's just see what it said in the conclusion. Then it has four right angles. Okay? Yes, a quadrilateral, if a quadrilateral is a square, it, that means it has four right angles. All right? So, yes, Q, quadrilateral QRST has four right angles. That's what you're saying. But it's not always a square. Okay? If your quadrilateral is a square, all right, then all four sides are congruent and you have four right angles. It's the and part that you need. So it's not always true. Law of syllogism. So here's how you need to do this, just like what we did in, in class. So this is important. You have if A is to B and then B is to C, then you say A is to C. All right, beginning is to middle, middle is to end, as the beginning is to the end. All right, those are three statements. All right, so if the first two are true, then you can say the last part. So on 19, if x is less than negative 2, then the absolute value of x is greater than 2. All right, so let's, that seems to be right. And then the second statement, so that's A is to B, if beginning is to end, uh, to the middle. And notice it has the middle here, and it has the C part here. So if X is greater than 2, then the absolute value is greater than 2. All right? All right, so we should have talked about this in class, just in case. If A is to B and C is to B, then you can say A is still to C. If beginning is the middle and the end is to the middle, so they can rearrange the second statement. It's okay to do that. So, and that's what they did on 19. All right? So now what are you going to say? You're going to say the beginning, number 19, if X is less than negative 2, and now you use C. That was uh, C... Uh, is that part, then x is greater than 2. All right, if x is less than negative 2, which means like negative 3, then negative 3 is greater than 2. All right, so the question is, were the original two statements true? Okay, and you have to go through there and look at that. I'm interested in, can you identify the beginning and the end, and then can you write them correctly? All right, so that's... Very important that you get that part. All right, let's try 21 just to make sure we can do this. I just want you to be able to put it in the right order. If a figure is a rhombus, then the figure is a parallelogram. All right, if a is to the middle, the beginning is to middle. So the beginning is if a figure is a rhombus. That's the beginning, or a. All right, then the figure is a parallelogram. That's the middle. We're never going to use that in our answer. So then we have, again, if a figure is a parallelogram, that's the middle part. All right, that's the same as this right here. The figure is a parallelogram. The figure is a parallelogram. That's your middle. And then it goes on and tells you, then the figure has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. That's your C. So what you're going to be doing is taking the beginning and putting it with the end. That's what I know that you can want to know that you can do. But notice that the middle pieces are identical. The figure is a parallelogram. The figure is a parallelogram. 
you have to identify the two that are the same. And then you write the other two things, the beginning and the end. So if a figure is a rhombus, then the figure, oops, let's do this. The figure uh, has two pairs of opposite sides that are parallel. You can use a parallel symbol. Okay, next page. All right, state the law of logic that is illustrated. So you have the law of detachment and you have the law of syllogism. Here's a, here's a hint. Uh, the law of detachment has your if-then statement. The law of syllogism has two statements and probably the third with it as well. Just based on that alone, you should be able to tell what it is. So number 23 has two if-then statements. If you do your homework, then you can watch TV. If you watch TV, then you can watch your favorite show. All right? If you do your homework, then you can watch your favorite show. That's the law of syllogism. So you have your, your two if-then statements there, and you have the third part right there, the beginning and the end statements. So that's law of syllogism, number 23. Law of syllogism. Okay, 25, right here. If x is greater than 12, then x plus 9 is greater than 20. The value of x is 14. So x plus 9 is greater than 20. So this is the law of detachment. There's only two statements here, really, and then it gives you the truth part that's actually real, the reality statement. There's, there's not a beginning, a middle, and an end, and you don't have two, two of the uh, middle pieces. So this is the law of detachment. Now, if you want to talk about truth, that's a different story. But I want you to be able to tell which one they are, and then but you understand how to look at them for truth. All right, number 27. Use inductive reasoning to uh, make a conjecture about the given quantity. Then use deductive reasoning to show that the conjecture is true. All right, so remember, deductive is definitions there it's definite it is a, a law so you could say d facts and definitions but i want you to have an easy way of remembering deductive reasoning has definitions it's it's a fact of something but inductive reasoning okay is when you have a pattern so you have to remember that deductive is is a definite factual thing like a rule okay so let's look at this um Use inductive reasoning. So we're looking for a pattern, and then we're going to use deductive reasoning to show that it's true. So the sum of two odd integers. So let's add two odd integers. Sum means addition. Odd integers. 3 plus 5. And they're integers, so these are whole numbers or negatives. 3 plus 5. How about, um, let's do 5 plus negative 7. Okay. And let's do negative 1 plus uh, 7. All right, so those are odd integers. So 3 plus 5 is 8. 5 plus negative 7 is negative 2. Negative 1 plus 7 is 6. These happen to be even integer answers. So our conjecture, we're making a conjecture, okay, to use a deductive reasoning here. So um, the sum of odd, two odd integers is an even integer. The sum of two odd integers is um, an even, oops, an even integer. Good. 29. Decide whether inductive reasoning or deductive reasoning is used. So you have to be able to do this and then explain your reasoning. All right. So what we're looking for for our reasoning is that it's facts, definitions, Accepted property is really a law or a rule. Inductive reasoning is you're looking for a pattern. So 29, each time you go to bed, you charge your electronic devices. So the next time you go to bed, you will charge your electronic devices. All right, so that's based on a pattern. So that would be inductive reasoning. And you can use I or D. Number 31, all photosynthetic organisms produce oxygen. Phytoplankton are photosynthetic organisms, so phytoplankton produce oxygen. 
All right, so that's a rule. Photosynthetic organisms produce oxygen. So that's deductive reasoning that you're using to say that photoplankton produce oxygen. Excellent. All right, last page. Surprise, that's it.